the product itself is so, so simple that I, there was in the back of my mind, this doubt of like, you know, what if this is a complete flop? I'd like to welcome Jeff Sheldon to the Productivity is Podcast. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, Mike, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to chat. So normally on uh, the Sunday episodes, if you're listening to this right now, you're like, wait, Mike normally talks to himself on Sundays. I get to talk to somebody else, which is kind of cool. Normally I do that on Wednesdays, but there was a reason that I wanted to uh, deliver this episode sooner rather than later, and it's because I wanted to talk to you about uh, analog tools and analog capturing really the analog way. And of course, I'm holding in my hands because you were so generous to share uh, an advanced look at analog, which is the simplest productivity system, the the, uh, the product that you've got currently going on Kickstarter. And you killed it right out of the gate with this thing. Yeah, it's been, it's been a wild week. So tell uh, those who are not familiar with Ugmunk and, and what, you, what you build and what you do, and then we'll get into the genesis of, of analog. Sure. So yeah, Ugmunk is the main company that I've been designing and running for the last almost 12 years, which is crazy. Um, I, just a quick background on that. I, I studied design, um, still, you know, call myself a designer by trade and entrepreneur, entrepreneur by accident, um, and just love making things, love designing things. And Ugmunk was really born out of that passion for just making things started with graphic tees, moved into more workspace items, and then eventually, um, a desk organizer that you also have on your desk, yes. uh, Mike. And then, uh, most recently this campaign called analog. Um, so Ugmunk is my my full time brand that I'm running, and then these Kickstarters have been kind of side projects that have been working in the background. And then when I've launched them, they've taken on a life of their own. This this campaign for Analog kind of reminds me of um, when uh, when Aaron um, Aaron Mankey, who had his frictionless cards, and I was actually talking mm-hmm. to my old podcasting partner Michael Schechter about this via text uh, uh, as soon as Analog went live on Kickstarter, and he backed it right away. And I was nice. not surprised. I'm like, okay, so he's still in the game. He's not doing productivity stuff too much anymore, but I know he likes his simple systems. And um, he said it remind like he talked about Aaron Mankey who used to have those frictionless carts. And I, I think you, do you, you remember when Aaron used to do that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do remember seeing that. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. We didn't have anything. I mean, we've had Baron Fig with their, with their uh, index cards. And I mean, Merlin Mance talked about the index card system for a long, I mean, the hipster mm-hmm. PDA, all that stuff. But yep. what, what, um, what this is reminding me of beyond that is uh, Aaron left that altogether when he started Lore, the podcast Lore. And I'll link to Lore in the show notes because that was not something any of us in the productivity space, which is where Aaron spent a lot of his time. Again, he was a designer as well. Like he did, you know, graphic design. He designed the logo for Mike's on Mike's back when I was doing that podcast. Um, And he designed a couple other logos for, for me as well. He started Lore, this podcast, which is, <laughs> it, it's one of the most popular podcasts out there, totally out of left field. And now he, that's all he does. When I saw the results of Analog, and as of, I'm going to just jump onto Kickstarter real quick as I'm saying this to see how, unless you already know, you might even have it, you probably refresh it. <laughs> but I'm yeah. seeing like all the stuff that you've, you've, you've built, you know, the t-shirt business, which by the way, high, high quality stuff, I think too, that's the other thing, right? Like the idea Mm -hmm. of high quality stuff. Um, the, uh, the gather, you've got other goods as well. Prints. I'm looking at analog right now. And as, um, as of this recording, uh, you asked for, and I'm going to have to transfer this into, well, actually, no, I can't, I can convert it to, okay. So your goal was 6,000 us dollars. As of right now, you've, You've you've raised one hundred and forty eight thousand seven hundred and seven dollars with still thirty seven days to go in the campaign. Like that to me, it all it, yeah. it, it feels like okay. Is this your thing now? Is this what you're? Is this going to be the thing? Because I know gather. I mean, how well did gather do? Did gather gather did pretty well as well, didn't it? Yeah. So gather did really well. Um, we raised about four hundred and thirty thousand by the end of that campaign. Wow. And, but, and that was a product that was definitely a lot, a a lot of, it's a real big physical, good product, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's wood, there's plastics, there's magnets, all this. This this is a deck of cards. (laughs) 
<laughs> with, yeah. with, with, with other, ad- I mean, there's a stand that you've got and all that stuff, but th- to get, you know, this much out of the gate, like it must have been, did you expect this? Like, did you expect it to be this or did you, I mean, and you can be, you can gloat a bit. You're saying, yeah, you know what? I've, I, mm-hmm. I ran it through the, and, and I figured it would do well, but this, this to me seems like, wow, especially after the first week. For sure. Yeah. It's only, we're a week into it and to be at 148,000 is, is beyond my expectations. I mean, I, I knew that there was potential for this to go um, big as far as like the, the reach of it, because there's so many people obviously into productivity and trying to improve their workflow. But at the same time, the product is, you know, I'm telling people, this is the simplest thing I've ever designed when it comes down to it. It's not like, you know, gather had moving parts and magnets and metal and injection molded plastic. And, you know, it was very, uh, there's a lot of money invested up front and tooling, all these things for analog. It's like the product itself is so, so simple that I, there was in the back of my mind, this doubt of like, you know, what if this is a complete flop? Like, it seems like it's going to work. And I've been using a version of these cards, regular index cards, then prototypes of the cards. I'd print them off and all sorts of um, different versions of analog cards for the last probably seven, eight years. Mm. But it didn't become an actual product until really the, you know, the last two where I focused a lot of time refining the design, the card holder, and we can get into some of those design things. So I didn't know. I mean, I, my, my kind of big, big goal we've already blown by, which was to get to six figures, and we're only a week in. So when did you decide that, okay, this is a product that, you know, I've been using this for a while. This is a product that I need to put out there and see if others are interested. Because, I mean, again, another another uh, story that this resembles is Ryder Carroll's bullet journal story, right? The mm-hmm. idea of bullet journaling, where it was his system he used. And then someone said to him, hey, you know, this is really cool. You should do more with this. And now all of a sudden the bullet journal method is, is a, is a phenomenon. Like, like mm-hmm. what was that moment where you went from, Oh, this is something that I just used to wait a minute. There might be more to this. Yeah. I mean, I think I pulled from a lot of things. So, you know, writer's bullet journal, David Allen, getting things done, Cal Newport's deep work, a lot of these philosophies and things that are out there. Um, you know, I felt I really resonated with, and I'm like, I love this concept. I love this. Um, you know, for me, the bullet journal, while I love the concept, it was just, I tried doing it. It was just too much work. It was too many, there was too many parts to do for me. Mm-hmm. And that's just because of maybe my, how uh, distractible I am. And, but I like some ideas about it. And I, you know, I kind of took all of the inspiration from all of these things and said, I want to make this into my own version. And at that time, it wasn't necessarily like, I'm going to make this into a product, but I wanted to try and see if it helped me to focus. And, you know, if you watch the the Kickstarter video, you'll see kind of my story unfold. And I have tried a lot of other paper planners and journals and and tangible things. I've tried every digital app, you know, that I can find. And I still use digital apps. But when it comes to actually like picking the things I need to work on for today, um, you know, Asana and Basecamp and all these things, they fall apart because I just end up switching tabs or opening my phone, browsing Instagram, like everyone's done it. You know, we go to open up to, to send someone, a, you know, an email. And before you know it, you're checking a sports score, you're, you're checking your stocks, whatever it is. And I'm like, okay, this has to be so dead simple that the card itself will keep me focused, will sit right in front of my face, right below my monitor. Um, or if I grab it and take it with me to a coffee shop, like that I'm able to just keep this, this small amount of task in front of me at all time. And then kind of incorporate some of those principles of carrying things over or delegating or half complete, um, you know, partially complete tasks and things like that. What's interesting, as you mentioned, this is you, t- you talk about like the personalization component of it, because you'll always hear the arguments from those that are die hard or perhaps even have, you know, the cult like following of like a getting things done or bullet journal where they're like, well, the reason it didn't work for you is that, you know, you, 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 you can adapt it. You can make it work the way you want to. And what I find fascinating about that argument is that uh, there has to be a pain point that we all come across, which is why, like, I don't follow the getting things done methodology any longer to its, um, you know, to its, to its, to a T to, you know, as, as quote intended. I mean, the things I keep that from David Allen's system that I, I find are incredibly helpful are capture the capturing, of course, Mm -hmm. and then also subtasks are stupid and don't exist, right? Like those are the two mm-hmm. things that, that from his attitude and from bullet journaling, I think that there's obviously some, some, 
uh, the idea of the 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 markers, right? Like the okay, this is what this symbol means. This is what this, and yeah, you've nicely incorporated this into into analog. But what you've also done, which no one has really kind of done systematically since probably the hipster PDA, is the size, the form factor, and that that mm-hmm. to me is just that's the the big deal here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the three by five index card that we've all used, you know, for various things. There's something about that size and then it's portability. And then also just the fact that it limits, you know, people have asked like, Hey, can you fit? Like, I need like 15 to 20 lines on my card. I'm like, well, maybe we'll make the super productive edition and it'll be a (laughs) a four by six card, but, um, or maybe they can, maybe they can flip the card over and add more things, or maybe they have two cards for today. Right. Like you've got constraints that Pressfield talks about this, right. With the idea of the fool scab Mm -hmm. method, right. Like everything should fit up. Like there is, You've got a framework, but it's flexible and yet like it has all the elements of what I love, you know, when I, especially when I talk about time crafting, the idea of simple, flexible, durable analog Mm -hmm. has all of that. And when I look at like the today view, which I've been using, you know, like I don't necessarily put just the day, I put the theme of the day because then I'm like, okay, this card should have these types of tasks on it. And then Mm -hmm. the next one will have the other daily theme for, for another day. And then the someday will maybe not have a daily theme on it at all, but it'll have like, okay, this is related to a project or this is related to, you get to play with it the way that you want, which is what you really want in a productivity tool. Exactly. Yeah. I I want to, I want people to be able to customize analog to fit however they work. And because we don't all do the exact same things, um, you know, I didn't want to put too many constraints in place as far as how many lines you have to fill out. You know, there's, there's other great ideas and great things that people you know, themes or highlights from the day or highlights from the week or, um, you know, all different ways to use a card. People are using them, you know, some of the other friends that are testing, they said, instead of taking their laptop to meetings now, they take one analog card Mm. and that's all the notes they'll take from the meeting. And if it doesn't fit on there, like it's not important. And just like thinking about different ways to use the card in the format, um, you know, and and making the card something that you actually want to carry and it's well-designed, nice paper stock and all that is kind of complementary or secondary. But I think there is the the constraints of having the small card. It makes you think, like it makes you prioritize. Like, okay, I no longer can keep adding to my list because there, the hours in the day are, will run out before I can get to stuff. Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. I'm really excited with what Jeff's bringing together, but I'm even more excited to have someone to talk to on this particular episode because usually the Sunday episodes are solo episodes, but no matter the episodes, I do need to take breaks every once in a while to talk about our sponsors, and I'm going to do that right now. There's never been a better time to embrace convenient, quality online education, and the UCI Division of Continuing Education can give you that in spades. You see... UCI is not new to online education. For years, they've been providing students with quality online courses. And with online courses, you can learn on your own time online. So why jump into the continuing education space? Well, continuing education is a great way to stay abreast of developments and best practices in your field. You want to stay on top of your game, and the UCI Division of Continuing Education can help you make that happen. They've got courses and certifications in a wide range of categories, from business and leadership to IT, project management, law, human resources, and over 60 convenient certificates and specialized studies programs on campus and online designed for the working professional. Online courses are taught by expert instructors with industry experience. 
and they offer flexibility and a real immersive online classroom experience where you can collaborate with your peers. And getting that flexibility is so huge. Why? Well, because online courses allow busy working adults to take classes at their own time. And you don't have to drive to campus. Certificate programs offer best practices and teach the most relevant practical skills. And there are certificate programs and specialized study programs that are available. Certificate programs offer an in-depth body of knowledge to ensure you gain mastery of a particular topic, whereas specialized studies feature shorter, more concentrated curricula for those that are short on time. And you may fit into that category. But both are distinctive achievements that can help prepare you for career advancement or transition you can advance your career in as little as six months. And I want you to let the UCI Division of Continuing Education help you with that. Enrollment is now open for the summer quarter. Now, some of the courses have already begun, but that doesn't keep you from starting now. There are plenty of courses still available. And if you're interested in learning more about these programs, but you're concerned about the cost, well, UCI has scholarship options for those that qualify. So what are the next steps? Well, the next step, the very next step, is to visit ce.uci.edu slash productivityist and then enter the promo code TIMECRAFTING and you'll get 15% off of one course. That's ce.uci.edu slash productivityist and then enter that promo code TIMECRAFTING for that 15% discount off of one course. Now, there are some terms and conditions. The offer is only valid until July 31st at 11.59 p.m., and the discount is for almost all of the certificate programs. The exceptions only include coding boot camps, international programs, teacher credentialing programs, and test prep courses. But don't delay. Time is of the essence here. You want to level up, and the UCI Division of Continuing Education can help you do that. Visit ce.uci.edu slash productivityist right now, enter the promo code TIMECRAFTING, and get 15% off of one course today. And now let's get back to my conversation with Jeff Shelton here on the Productivityist podcast. It was either something I thought about, I think it might have been, where I said, you know, this could be used for um, routines too, for habits, for keeping streaks going, like the indicators mm -hmm. that you have. And I mean, the great thing is all the instructions, and again, these are guidelines, um, I would say, right? Like they give you yeah. a, a bare, bare idea of what you can use them for, but then you've got task signals and there's four and there's like well just create your own like there's so many and then the, of course the card signals as well which is the interesting thing that how are you finding that part because i mean the task signals for me were were i got those uh, and i was able to kind of play with those a bit although i don't put appointments on my on my i'm still a firm that i guess that's the other thing too for G, gtd diehards is like the calendars for appointments the to-do list is for tasks right so i don't put appointments on there but the card signals. How have you been finding people using the card signals? Because I think that there's definitely some some flexibility and maybe even maybe impossibly. I wouldn't say too much, but just like uh, uh, there's some ambiguity around those. Yeah, the card signal. I mean, this is one of those things where we'll find out. You know, once we have several thousand people using it, if there's other uses or if people like it or, or don't use it at all. But the card signal uh, and what we're describing is just three little dots in the upper right hand corner of the card. Um, and it's a, it doesn't have to be used, but there's different uses that I have come up with. The first is which would I usually use it for, which is just to kind of give myself a grade on how well, how productive I was in that day. So if I've completed every task on my card, I fill in all three dots. If I haven't, I might fill in one, or if I got halfway there, I'll fill in two. And it's, it's some of the gamification around productivity or just the fact that like, man, it feels good when you can finally get all all 10 or all five tasks, however many were on there, which to be honest is not very often. Mm. Um, but I think it's just a fun little detail to be able to fill in those dots. Um, and there's other ways to use it. So another option and an example I give in the how-to video is rather than use it to rate yourself on productivity, maybe it's you know all of your home projects get one dot filled in, all of your work projects get two dots filled in, or making different patterns just to kind of connect them or keep them in bundles based on that little signal. Right. Like that today view. See, and again, this is, this is where it gets interesting for, cause a lot of people, when they, when they have a framework, they, they see one card like, okay, so that's the card for today. Not necessarily. It could be the card for today mm -hmm. for your home projects, but then you've got like the dots can indicate, okay, this is work. This is home. Right. Same thing. Like, so you can, that's a, there's so much flexibility built into this that, that, you know, what, what I, what I find amazing about it too, is that, I don't use these 
I have my daily driver, which is my like my bigger planning sheets that I use for time crafting. But what I've been doing is because of the portability is I've been moving things into analog and using elements of my own planner in in analog. Like you've talked about, like you said, hey, you know, you've used like Cal Newport's deep work and the idea of the bullet journal method and and getting things done. You're able to bring those elements into it. And again, color plays a role too, like the different mm-hmm. color inks you can use both yep. for the dots and the signals and it's just uh, to me that there's, there's those elements are really um, it's what makes analog so uh, compelling. I think, to, especially to people who want to embrace like more analog tools. But I have to uh, ask: you're not just using analog for your as your productivity tool, right? You must be using some sort of digital tool for incubation and long term storage. Is that mm-hmm. is that how that yep. workflow works for you? Yeah. So analog is is definitely the daily driver, but I'm not. You know, one of the things I, I made very clear and wanted to make very clear, um, even in talking to people early on in the prototype stage, was this doesn't replace your digital system. Like, I'm not anti-digital. Like, you know, we should stop sending email. We should only send, you know, t- take out the typewriter and mail the letters. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I'm a huge fan of digital. I, I mean, I use my all sorts of apps every single day. Um, so the long-term tasks for me, so we've, we've jumped around to a couple of different things. Um, we were using Asana for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and then honestly, I end up using Simple Note on my phone, uh, which syncs to my desktop for just capture, like quick capture, not necessarily organization. Um, and then Dropbox Paper is what I'm using to organize project based work. Um, and especially because a lot of the stuff I do is visual. Paper works great for just literally like pasting in a YouTube link or dragging in images, annotating things, um, and also collaborating on things. So a lot of what I do is writing copy for, you know, emails and, um, all of the pre-launch and launch stuff that were for around products, so it allows me and and the two people on my team to collaborate. Um, same as like Google Docs, but I, I just call it a prettier, more stripped down version of Google Docs. And then I, I categorize things. It allows you to put to dos on there, um, but it's it's a, not a very strict uh, task management app. It's not really made for that specifically. But then again, it it goes to the difference between how I work and how you might work, and how mm-hmm. someone else listening might work. Where they're like, wow, I would. I need way more structure than that than just to do, you know, a paper Dropbox paper document. Um, so it's kind of a combination of those things, and then depending on the ebb and flow of different projects and and times of the business and how things are growing and what I need, we kind of move back and forth. But analog is what draws the the actual tasks out of those apps at the beginning of the day. I transfer it onto my today card, and that's what I'm looking at all day. So no no matter what app, like I feel like the digital world can keep changing and analog will still be the thing that pulls it out and puts it in front of me on my desk. And I would imagine I'm hypothesizing here, but the next cards are get transferred to either digital or today, depending on when you capture them. Mm-hmm. More, and then the someday cards are just stuff you generally capture on the analog cards. And they normally wind up in the digital until you need them to bring to one of the other cards. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty accurate. I mean, the, there is some repetition and some people be like, I can't believe you would copy down something that you already have. Like, can you just print it out? And there's even in the repetition of taking something, you know, pulling your, your task manager up and then writing it down, it does something to your brain. It, it reiterates it. It makes you think about it twice. Like, why do I keep writing this thing down if I don't actually have hey, to do it? You better connect with it. Like you're better connecting yeah. with it. And also the things that keep coming to your brain to the fore are, are, I mean, there's a reason for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So the the next card, it's the the on deck card where I have things that I'm like, okay, once I complete these t- these card the tasks on my today card, I will transfer them on literally by just copying them over and then crossing them off on the next card. Um, but those those are generally populated from whatever digital app I'm using. So have you foregone using all other analog? no pun intended tools, or do you still use like an, do you like use an analog journal? Do you journal at all? Like, how does that, does that play, does that play in at all? Or are you basically like digital for most things? Analog is the thing that kind of, uh, I use to uh, make sure I take action on these steps regularly. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I use a sketchbook cause I'm doing a lot of product sketches and concept, uh, concepting when it comes to physical products, but I don't journal. Um, I've tried and again, didn't have the discipline to keep up with it. And I'm like, I see other people and I see these beautiful journals and bullet journals and beautiful watercolor illustrations. And I want to get to that, you know, stage, but then it just falls off. So like analog, one of the reasons why I kept feeling the need to launch analog is because it's the one thing I kept coming back to. Like these Mm -hmm. cards work so well for me. If they work so well, 
for me, there's got to be other people out there that feel the same way, um, you know, that maybe have the same kind of workflow and, and mentality when it comes to how they get things done that I do. So the analog cards are, are mostly all that I use as far as digital, I mean, uh, as far as non-digital productivity. So um, just a thought. And this actually came to me as we were just discussing about journaling, but you've got the back of the cards. Now, I know the back of the cards can be useful for notes, and that's what I've used them for as well. But there's two things. Number one, um, if, if, you, if you're going to back analog, and I'm going to link to it obviously in the show notes, so you're listening right now, go, yes, I want to. Um, the back of the cards are, are dot grid, right? They're dot, I believe they're, yeah, they're dot, mm-hmm. they're yep. dot grid, um, which is, I think that's our favorite. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think anyone who buys index cards other than like dollar store ones goes, oh, dot grid, like not blank, not lined, dot grid. But also, um, so you could either use that for journals. And I know James Clear has talked about the idea of like the one line journal entry or something like that. But the other thing you could do is you could, and I mean, I still have a bunch of Baron Fig uh, index cards and things like that, or you just get regular index cards and you could write an, a journal entry and then just attach it like staple, whatever you want to do to the existing, uh, to do the today card. And then you've got like the story of your day, both in task form, but also in mm. story form. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, I think that again, it simplifies the journaling. It doesn't feel like I have this separate, I have to block out an hour a day to, to journal. It's like, I'm going to take, you know, maybe there's one great thing that happened or one thing I accomplished or a great meeting I had with somebody that I could kind of annotate on the back and then go back and look at them. Cause yeah, and yeah also, right now, there's I mean, constra- I've been saving all of my cards yeah. and I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do long-term <laughs> if this is a long-term thing, but it's just like fun to, you know, open up a drawer and have, you know, hundreds of really thousands of cards from over the years that I've kept as far as like, this is what I've accomplished. And, uh, but I don't know. Yeah. If, if I had notes like that, I'd actually want to go back and look at some of the journal entries. Well, and the nice thing about that too, is number one, you've constraints. Like we talked about simply like, Oh, how long do my journal entries have to be? How long? What do yeah. I, it's like, look, you can fit them on the back of a, of, an in, of this card. And not only that, the other cool thing is, is, um, if you, if you decide like, Hey, I'm going to keep these as uh, basically like for lack of a better term, a commonplace book, like we've heard, you know, Ryan mm-hmm. holidays talked about this and Robert green, you know, I mean, you, we've all, I think you've seen the video where he flips through the, the hundreds and hundreds of cards that he used to write the 48 laws of power. Um, you, you basically have the one side that's tasks and then the other side that's stories. So if you want to just read your journal entries, you just flip it over. Like you just have, okay, we're going to go from the, <laughs> we're going to turn the cards over and go look at them from the back as opposed to from the front. So there, there again, there's so much versatility. And I have to say, obviously the, the simplest stuff scales and there's a genius mm-hmm. level behind it. And that, that resonates through all the products that you really make. Like I've not seen anything that, you've created through Ugmunk that has been, uh, complicated or, um, mm-hmm. and, and there there's that that's got to come from some kind of, uh, design sensibility that you had before you even started to study design. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that's definitely a high compliment because I think that's what my goal is. And I think, uh, obviously inspired by people like, uh, Dieter Rams and, and Johnny Ive, you know, doing these, they're, they're essentially taking out everything that's unnecessary to get to the core essence of a design. Um, but still making something beautiful and still making something functional and understandable. And, uh, I, yeah, I don't know all of the 10, 10 principles of good design that, that Dieter Rams talks about, um, by memory, but basically walking through those things. And what that does is it strips out a lot of the extra stuff that can be distracting in the design process. Um, and for analog itself, you know, there's, there's subtle things like it's, there's a, there's a whole school of people that it might be like, I don't get it. It's index cards. It's just, I can get these for 99 cents. And, and you know what, if index cards work for you, that's totally fine. I'm like, you know, if you want to get a steak, you can get, you can pay a certain price. If you want to get a hamburger at McDonald's, you can pay 99 cents. Like it's, it's, there's different schools of thought for different people, but the people that get it, the people that resonate with those subtle details and the the interaction and the functionality and just like how it feels to hold one of these cards in your hand versus a regular index card. Um, I think they connect on that, that level, even if they don't call themselves a designer, I think they connect on, on the level of detail that I'm putting into it. Well, I was chatting with Paul Jarvis late last week and he's a mutual friend of ours. He lives not too far from me. And one of the things he says on the Kickstarter campaign is this analog is my perfect desk companion. I can use it for digital tasks, but it lives where I have constant easy access to it beside my keyboard. And Paul is definitely somebody who get like, he loves that, that sleek, minimal kind of design. And he, to get him to use a to-do list application, 
Come on. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah. loves to have, but to have that stuff, like, I mean, you go through the, the Kickstarter page and there's um, uh, endorsement after endorsement. And, and Jeff, you've put something pretty, I mean, again, I haven't seen anything like this in the productivity landscape since the bullet journal. Uh, and mm -hmm. you, you mean, this is, this is really, I mean, people often say is paper, the next killer app. And what you've done is you've said yes. And here's how I can make it so that it's easier for you to use, uh, because you've got a, a simple framework that again is flexible and also durable It'll stand this test of time. So where can people learn more about you and your work? And of course, uh, where can they back analog and, and learn more about the journey of analog as well? Yeah, so to, to back the Kickstarter, uh, the easiest way is to go to ugmonk.com slash analog. So that's U-G-M-O-N-K dot com slash analog. And uh, that'll redirect you right to the Kickstarter page and you can pre-order. The campaign will be running for a little bit more here. And then we're going to continue. We'll, we'll carry it on our main site um, after that. And we're, we're exploring some different ideas around subscription and refills and kind of subscriber bonuses and thing, other things we can make it uh, interesting and, and just fun little hidden things that we can incorporate into that. Um, but the one thing that, you know, we didn't get into and we don't have to talk at length at because I feel like visually you'll understand it a whole lot better when, when you go to the Kickstarter video is just the, the wooden holder that is, mm. that actually holds these analog cards and how that came about and how huge of a part of that, that's been cut, that's become, um, that's for true. the analog system. Yeah. Um, and the, this wood holder that holds the cards, your today card in the front and the rest of the cards in the back really didn't that this whole idea didn't even come till this past year. Now I've been working on analog on and off for many years, several years. Um, but what this wood holder has done is gives it a place for the cards to live, um, to grab a new one and discard one. And then to keep your next and someday cards on the back, keep your today card up in front and, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's hard to describe on a podcast, but I think if you'll you see, see it, the yeah. and, way I mean, that the magnetic divider, the mm -hmm. metal divider magnetically snaps in and um, just some of the details. I didn't, I honestly didn't realize that that was going to be what 90, probably 90 plus percent of people are backing for, not just the cards, but for this actual base where the cards can live. Well, and, and that's the thing is that right now um, I've been using them, but I don't have any kind of stand for it. Uh, so I've just been propping it up against my iMac screen. But when I'm done with a card, and you and I talked about this before we started recording, is I have the gather, as you mentioned, and I can uh, put it in the the uh, there's a, a like a, a rectangular box that the cards fit in perfectly. Now the other thing you could do if you have the gather already, and I've done this before too, but it's not my desk setup doesn't allow for this as much anymore. But there's the i the the phone holder where you could put the charger on. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to, you, you could put the card actually in, like it leans in there perfectly well. So if you already got the gather and, mm -hmm. and you, um, you know, and, and you, you, you back, I mean, obviously, and this thing, you know, you look at the stand and it's a perfect companion for the gather as well. Um, you've got, uh, you're right. It, it puts everything front and center and it looks, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it, everything that you've made looks great. And the, and the holder, the, the, it looks just as good. So yeah, I, I backed that element. So I've backed the campaign. Um, and, uh, that's definitely the one when I saw that, I'm like, yep, I want that. Cause I don't have anything to put them on right now. So that's what I'm going to be. Yeah. I, I need that. Yeah, it, it really completed the whole idea of what analog is. And, and, you know, people are saying they're going to lose the cards and, you know, I've only, I didn't have the, the prototypes of the holder to even to give you early access to, but I think once you have that and people notice like having the place to form the habit. So a lot of it too, is like other philosophies and stuff that I've pulled from mm -hmm. is, if you need that, you need a cue to start the habit, right? To yep. start to think about, I need to pull one of these cards out every time I sit down and start my day or, or you know, end my day. Um, and the holder is that cue. It gives the card somewhere to just, oh, there it is. I got to start, you know, I got to stop, get out of my email inbox and I got to start focusing on, you know, what, what should I attack today? And it's and, great uh, because you've yeah. actually given us something to do that as opposed to us. Again, you've lowered the barrier to entry because for the, for in the meantime, I've been like, okay, where can I put this so I can see it? You've now created the, the thing for us to have that. So again, you, you've left no stone unturned really. Thanks. Yeah. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, there's, I think it will definitely evolve. And like you said, is this my thing now? Like, I don't know. I have, I have so many ideas around analog. I think there's a lot of uh, thought even just bringing the community together around people are using it and sharing stories with each other to kind of like help each other understand how you can use a tangible, you know, card-based system like this. 
Jeff, this has been great. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Of course, all the links are in the show notes. And they can also follow you online on Twitter and stuff like that as well, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I am UgMonk, U-G-M-O-N-K, on pretty much all social media. Thanks again, Jeff, for joining me today on the Productivity Podcast. Yeah, it was a fun chat. Thanks, Mike.